welcome back to the second episode of 4 and 8 mark questions so in the previous uh, session episode uh, already we have discussed organizing steps or the process their identification and division of work de departmentalization assignment of duties and establishment of good reporting system or reporting system let us move on the next question importance of organizing means how organizing very important in each and every business first one is benefits of specialization means the work specialization clarity in working relationship next optimum utilization of resources in the organization possible adaptation to change effective administration and development of personnel so these are the importance of organizing benefits of work specialization clarity in working relationship optimum utilization of resources adaptation to change effective administration and development of personnel in the organization here personnel means employee and expansion and growth of business also possible through organizing let us move on the next question differences between formal and informal organization so your formal and informal formal organizations are used to establish by top level management informal organizations establishes through personal interactions then formal organizations have certain rules and regulations to monitor day to day activities or to control day to day activities but in informal organization social network relationship formal organizations are directed by rules and in a formal organization communication according to scalar chain means formal communication channels come to informal no rules and regulations and communication in any direction in the organization then formal organizations are very rigid to the employee and informal organizations are very flexible to the employee because here in informal organization management will give freedom to the employee and employee right they can go ahead with the work as per their likes and dislikes let us move on the next question differences between delegation and decentralization so delegation compulsory act but decentralization is optional delegation very important to share authority and to share tasks but decentralization to take decisions in the organization that to quick decisions delegation the third difference it has narrow scope but decentralization it has wider scope then delegation reduces burden of managers but decentralization improve subordinates in the organization so these are the differences between delegation and decentralization next question explain authority responsibility and accountability let us come to know authority here let us get the meaning what is authority authority means power and rights of an individual to command the subordinates now we have certain points to explain authority right to give orders it can be delegated completely or fully 100% it arises from formal position means after the placement after assignment of right work to the right person in the organization authority will be given that's what arises from formal position then flows from superior to subordinate always authority flows from superior to subordinate in the organization then authority means power now responsibility what is responsibility here responsibility means an obligation or duty of individual or a person to accomplish the received task so your responsibility uh, duty to perform given job it cannot be fully delegated it arises from authority means after delegation of authority responsibility will be given and it flows from subordinates to superior always subordinates are responsible to the superior then responsibility is duty and the last one the last element of delegation accountability accountability means being answerable to the superior 
so here being answerable for the accomplished work or to the received work it cannot be delegated arises from responsibility means after the delegation of responsibility accountability then flows from subordinates to superior means subordinates are accountable to the superior means subordinates are answerable to the superior regarding received work then accountability is answerability so these three are the elements of or the components of delegation next question importance of decentralization here decentralization very important in taking quick decisions in the organization relief to top level management obviously then we can expect better control over day to day activities then decentralization facilitates the growth of organization and decentralization improves managerial talent for future so these are the benefits or the importance of decentralization very important question in annual examination point of view next question staffing process important question for 8 mark in the staffing process first one is manpower planning it is also called as human resource planning hrp second one is recruitment next is selection later placement and orientation training and development of employees then performance appraisal promotion and career planning compensation do remember there are eight steps there are eight steps or there are eight sub functions in the function staffing manpower planning recruitment selection placement and orientation training and development performance appraisal promotion and career planning compensation let us move on the next very important question types of interviews so direct interview indirect interview structural interview are the pattern structural interview pattern interview and another one is stress interview even structural also called as pattern and another type stress interview then board or panel interview and group interview these are the various types of interviews in the selection process of employee and always employee selection process will be done based on various types of selection tests and interviews in interview these are the types direct indirect structural also called as pattern interview stress interview then board or panel interview and the last one is group interview next question is various types of selection tests so here we have five types of selection tests as per ncert first one is intelligence test to check and analyze intelligent question of candidates then aptitude test then trade or proficiency test and here trade or proficiency this is the work related then personality test means analyzing and checking of values and culture and behavior of candidates and finally interest test the areas in which candidates are very much interested are passionate that's what interest test now the next question is selection process even this is also very important for 8 marks in the selection process first step is preliminary screening then selection test selection interviews reference and background check selection decision medical examination job offer it is also called as issuance of appointment letter to the selected candidates then contract of employment or job acceptance letter so while explaining selection process or the various steps to the second step selection tests you must mention various types of selection tests as we have discussed in the previous slide intelligence aptitude personality trade or proficiency and interest test you should mention various type of selection tests and you should explain all types of selection tests even to the interview also better you mention various types of interviews direct indirect board or panel interview then pattern interview stress interview group interview all these you mention so this is selection process in the selection process 
preliminary screening, selection test, interview, reference and background check, selection decision, medical examination, job offer and job contract. Here also we have 8 steps. Let us move on. The next question. Types of on the job and off the job training. Usually before sending employees to the work, management provides or the employer used to provide training to the employees. Usually training is very essential uh, to the new workers as well as the existing workers of the organization to improve new skills and ideas. There are two methods of training. One is on the job, another one is off the job training methods. So the types of training very important for 4 marks as well as 8 mark. To the 4 mark, the question may be like, briefly explain any four on the job methods of training or briefly explain any four of the job methods of training to the eight mark briefly explain any four on the job and any four of the job training so you can expect this type of questions for four and eight marks from the topic types of training so here we have on the job training methods one is apprenticeship internship job coaching and job rotation and come to off the job methods of training classroom lecturing case study vestibule training computer modeling programmed instructions and films next question benefits of training to organization actually training is very important for the development of employees as well as for the growth and development of the business now we discuss the benefits of training in organizational growth and development first one is Training reduces wasteful activities in the organization. Then training increases organizational output. Then training creates future managers to the organization. Then training increases employee morale means interest and reduces employee absenteeism in the organization. Then changing environment of the business. Definitely training changes organizational environment. I mean internal environment of the organization now let us discuss the importance of training or the benefits of training to the employee means the employee point of view how training is very important first one training improves skills and knowledge of employee training increases the performance of employee in the work then training makes the employee more efficient then training increases higher level job satisfaction and morale of employees so these are the benefits of training to the employee next question elements of direction are elements of directing we have four elements one is supervision motivation leadership and the last one is communication so these are the four elements of direction or directing to direct employee are to provide directions to the employee these four used to play very important role on employee to achieve organizational goals and objectives supervision motivation leadership and communication next question types or styles of leadership this is the most expected question for one and two max autocratic or authoritarian leadership style Democratic or participative leadership, laissez faire or free reign leadership, and these are the three main classifications or types in the leadership autocratic, democratic, and free reign. Now, let us discuss the very important question which I has asked in the previous year annual examination question paper that is, principles of directing. Actually, you will not get this question and you cannot find this question in the question bank. But in the previous year question paper, you can find this under section D for 8 marks. See, principles of directing. See, principles of directing means certain instructions and guidelines to handle employee or to provide directions to the employee in the organization. Maximum individual contribution harmony of objectives, unity of command, appropriateness of direction technique, manage real communication, use of informal organization, leadership, then follow through. 
these are the principles of directing maximum individual contribution harmony of objectives unity of command appropriateness of direction technique managerial communication use of informal organization leadership and follow through next question barriers to effective communication semantic barriers under semantic barriers language jargons faulty translation badly expressed message unclarified assumptions and second broad category under barriers organizational barriers status gap structural complexity rigid rules organizational facilities and organizational policy so these are organizational barriers to the communication then psychological barriers under psychological barriers distrust premature evaluation lack of attention and poor retention and finally personal barriers to the communication fear of challenge to authority lack of confidence unwillingness to communicate lack of proper incentives so there are four types of communication barriers semantic barrier organizational barrier psychological barrier and personal barrier under semantic barriers there are so many constraints under organizational and psychological and even under personal barriers also we have certain constraints the next question is ways to overcome barriers of communication or communication effectiveness so here consult others before communication ensure proper feedback convey things of help and value to the listeners follow of communication be aware of language tone and content of message be a good listener clarity of ideas communicate according to the needs of receiver consistency of message actually to overcome the barriers of communication and to make communication very effective and very proper and audible to the audience or the receivers these tips or these techniques are very essential one is consult other before communication and ensure proper feedback from the receiver convey the things of help and value to the listeners follow of communication be aware of language tone and content of message be a good listener clarity of ideas communicate according to the needs of receiver then consistency of message next question financial and non financial incentives to the employees to increase employee morale and for the higher level job satisfaction of employee and to retain employee and to make employee more effective and very active in the work financial and non financial incentives or benefits are very essential here financial incentives are pay and allowances then productivity linked wage incentives bonus profit sharing co partnership retirement benefits then perquisites so these are financial incentives pay and allowances productivity linked wage incentives bonus profit sharing co partnership retirement benefits perquisites next we have non financial incentives non financial incentives are status organizational climate career advancement opportunity job enrichment employee recognition programs job security employee participation and employee empowerment these are non financial incentives to the employee so non financial incentives are status organizational climate career advancement opportunity job enrichment employee recognition programs job security employee participation and employee empowerment so the next question qualities of good leader very important question for 8 mark physical features knowledge integrity initiative communication skills motivation skills self confidence decisiveness and social skills so these are the required qualities to become a good leader or a successful leader so leaders 
they must have these qualities one is good physical appearance and good knowledge integrity i mean professional ethics initiative communication skills attractive communication and very impressive communication and good communication very respectful communication then good motivation skills self confidence decisiveness and social skills nothing but sociability so these are the required qualities to become a successful or good leader thank you my dear students thanks for watching do share subscribe and comment